Good evening, everyone, and God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm so glad you are here tonight. Make sure you do well to share the links online with your friends. Let them know that we are live. We've posted it on the ministry group. All right, that's a very good way to spread the word. When you are in service, share the links and let your friends online know that the word of God is about to come. Tonight, by the grace of God, I'm teaching on an important subject, Christians and work. Christians and work. I'd like you to know that every time God wants to shift you, what he does is that he sends his word. The Bible says in Psalm 107 and verse 20, he said he sent his word and his word healed them uh -huh, and delivered them, very good, from all their destructions. So that means that the recipe for the deliverance and the lifting of the saints is the ministry of the word of God. Say with me, I prosper, <laughs> I thrive by the word and by the spirit. When God wanted to change the levels of Abraham and wanted to change him to Abraham, making him the father of many nations, what you will notice is that God took him on a journey and God told him to try to perform an exercise. What was the exercise? To look at the stars of the heaven. And see if he could count their numbers. Abraham tried, but what did he find out? He could not count all of them. Later, God said, you know what? Okay, if you cannot count, maybe your neck is spinning. You look down. Can you count the sands of the seashore? He said he could not. Then God now, in that similitude, he now declared his counsel for the life of Abraham. What am I trying to say? I'm saying that the assignment of the word first, before it delivers your inheritance, he first delivers you from wrong thinking. Be say with me, before the word of God delivers my inheritance to me, he first delivers me from wrong thinking. There are Christians today who have been privileged to be employed after a long session and months and even years of prayer, but they have now gotten the job and the way they are treating the job they make it look as if God was wrong in getting them employment. Are you here? But so now we want to look at Christians and work. We're majorly looking at, you know, attitude and capacity building in your workplace. Say with me, attitude and capacity building in your workplace. How many of you are employed here? How many of you are employed here? Let me see your hands. All right. How many of you do business here? Let me see your hand. Very good. So about 90% of the people here are employed and do business. So if you feel this message is for you, say yes. yes. So what I want to do tonight very quickly is I'll just give you a few terms and explain you know, the dynamics. Who is a Christian? If we say Christians and work, who is a Christian? A Christian is one or a person that has heard the message of the gospel believed the message and lives for Christ. I'm just giving you a simple definition. You have heard the message of the gospel, right? How that God sent Christ to die for the sins of man and that all who believe in him will be saved. But if you believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, confess with your mouth that the Lord God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. So a Christian is the one that has the life of God in him. A Christian is the new creation in Christ. A Christian is the one who has declared Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior. A Christian is a person who has said bye-bye to the old life and has embraced the new life in Christ. Do you agree? Come on, if you agree, say yes. yes. All right. God. What we want to focus on is work because we are looking at Christians and work. So it's not really a general message for just anybody. Even though a non-Christian may pick one or two lessons from here because there are general life laws that apply to both a Christian and a non-Christian. For example, the law of seed time and harvest does not apply only to Christians. I hope you know that if a non-believer plants, it will grow. 
the, the soil will not say because you are not a Christian. Are you understanding now? So let us define work. What is work? I'll give you a definition. What is work? Work is an activity. Work is an activity involving mental. Work is an activity involving mental and physical. Work is an activity involving mental and physical effort. Done in order, work is an activity involving mental and physical effort done in order to achieve a purpose or a result. Is that simple enough? Work is an activity that involves mental and physical effort done in order to achieve a purpose or result but i like you to look at that definition i gave to you you are going to notice two things there number one you are going to notice there is mental activity and there is physical activity one of the challenges we have as believers most times is that we just want to spiritualize everything and do not want to now translate the things we have received in our work with God and in the spirit or by the spirit to practically or life, let me say practical or life applicable principles. That's why you can attend a church where people are not falling down and manifesting under the anointing. But they are making money, they are increasing in goods, they are never begging. And yet there's another church where people are falling down and breaking the chairs. And both the pastor, the members, and the newcomers, everybody's in debt. It is not that God is faithful to one and unfaithful to the other. It's that one likes power. The other one understands principle. The power of God is one thing. His principles is another thing. The power of God can make men favor you and give you a job. It is the principles of the kingdom that will help you navigate your way prosper in that business are you together here for example i can pray for you which i will do tonight that god will make you 10 times better but the the longness of the amen or the length of your amen is not what will make it happen although your amen is good because it's a response of faith but beyond that your amen should now translate into looking for the principles that make the prophecy become a, you know, a manifestation. How do I mean? That Elijah prophesies to the king and says to the king, O oh king, saddle your ass because it's about to rain. If the king said, well, I believe that it is about to rain and I thank God it's about to rain after three and a half years, I would remain here until the rain starts. The king may drown inside the same ring that God brought. I'm saying that you must be a Christian that also appreciates principles from the word of God. Because they work. Say with me, they work. So there is, notice what I use, mental and there is physical. Have you noticed that, let's say CEOs of a bank, I'll give you scripture now. I don't need to introduce it a bit so that you have an understanding. CEOs of a bank or CEOs of banks can sit down in the office. AC is blowing their head. And a man can be in a park doing kaya. Do you know kaya? Carrying load for people, right? And the person, now, if you look at the both of them in the physical, one is wearing suit and tie with fine shoes, cufflink shirt, you know, double-breasted suit. AC is just rolling his chair, rolling. You think he's not doing anything. But the man that is carrying load, he said, Hi, look how hard working he is. He, Onora, on she shed gone. But listen, you cannot prosper beyond the level of your mindset. The limitation of many Christians is not Satan, it's their minds. I'm telling you that the level of the renewing of your mind 
is what determines the quality of the decisions you will make, which will eventually affect the quality of life that you will live. Are you understanding today? Hmm. So, when, later you will now find out that if you were made a, a CEO for two days, you were 85 kg before. After two days, when they check you, they found out that you have entered 74. Ah, what happened? Your brain was working. I'm saying it's not enough to have the Holy Ghost on your inside, yet nothing is happening to your intellect. It's not okay to be a non-thinking Christian. A non-thinking Christian cannot profit the kingdom of God in these days. You cannot go to your work just with speaking in tongues. You need to understand the dynamics of the workplace that puts you on top irrespective of opposition. Daniel was in Babylon. Daniel was a prime minister. Daniel was a special advisor. Yet Daniel, according to the Bible, was a prophet. I'm saying that it is not Christianity that is making you fail in the workplace. It's your own ignorance or unwillingness to obey the principles that make you prosper. Because there are unbelievers in your workplace that are getting the awards. Are you here? The KPIs. Making it. Making progress. And you, are, will, you will now go to the mountain. And, and I don't think that happens here. But that's the lot of many Christians, right? Then they will go to the mountain and say, Oh God. And they, they prefer 21 days in a mountain than 21 hours studying and researching to find out what makes for greatness or success or productivity in the workplace. Are you here? Yes, sir. Many years ago, I was one of my mentors. You know, Prof. Koredi Adjubiji. One of my mentors, in, he was in Lagos Business School then. He was working there. And I just went to visit the place and, you know, to visit him. And then I went into the place, you know, moved around a bit and saw the way. As when I entered the place, are you following? When I entered the place, I observed the way things were done. I observed the, uh, I observed even the movement of the people. I, I could see that by the way they carried themselves, there was a kind of mindset they had in that industry. I don't know if you understand, or in that school. Do you know in the lobby where I sat, a man came in and was just talking to his friend on food. When the man was done and he was leaving, do you know he counted money? Maybe 10,000 back then. I'm talking about maybe seven years ago now or thereabout. And he gave me. Why? Because I was well dressed and I sat down properly. He just looked at me. Maybe he thought I was one of their staff. Kilo come. Will I say no? I will not say no. I'm trying to say that as a Christian, one of the things the Lord put in my heart to teach you concerning this thing is that listen, if you do not give yourself to the right exposure early. You will miss a rich pie in destiny. If you do not give yourself to the right exposure early, you will miss what? A rich pie in destiny. Now let's enter scripture. Are you ready? Yes, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. If you are getting blessed already, say amen. amen. My friends online, if you're getting blessed, say amen. Type amen. Genesis chapter 1. Let's go. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. I know you can quote Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Let's try. One, two, ready, go. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. One, two, ready, go. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now notice, as at the time God was creating the heavens and the earth, according to scripture, he says that there was darkness. There was chaos. Things were not stable. Maybe we should just read it carefully. Look at it. In the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty. And darkness covered the deep, the, the deep waters. And the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Verse 3. One, two, ready, go. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Now, when you look at every two, two verses in Genesis 1, you're going to notice a consistent pattern. God said, and it was so. God said, God said. Meaning that, hear me now, that means that for the first six days of creation, God was working. Are you here? Yes. So the, the template for work in Christianity is not a Muslim that is doing well. Mm. Are you here? Yes, sir. The average Christian's prayer point is, Oluwa, Mofel, Lowo, Bidangote. No. 
Oluwa je kin dabi dango te. No. You can appreciate the strides they are making. Even though they are all, it doesn't mean that every unbeliever is your enemy. Are you understanding? Yes. However, we have a superior model in God the Father, in God the Son, and in God the Holy Ghost. There is none in the Godhead that is lazy. If the Almighty God that can speak the galaxies into existence works for six days, you that is not omnipotent, why will you not work? There are Christians that don't want to work but are praying to God to prosper them. God did not say we prosper laziness. He says we prosper the works of your hands. Are you still with me? It was on the seventh day that God rested. Some of you are resting too much when you have not done anything. Your brain has not sweated but your body is sweating a lot. That's why your salary cannot host you for one month. If your brain has not sweated, what I'm saying is if you have not taken time to think and process things, I'm not saying worry. Worry is not the thinking I'm talking. Are you understanding? You want to find out, okay, what is the business I'm doing? Are you here? What career path am I pursuing? What are the things that are necessary here? Because sometimes the people you may call your mentor may not even understand how that system runs. It is in your reading of books and doing research and working with the Holy Spirit that you will receive practical insight into how things work there is theory of how things work but there is practical rules that work are you here yes, hmm. with time i will show you so god hear me now look at the first principle because god works the christian must work are you getting blessed yes if you are with me say ah uh, you know this is home i'm no more away now i'm with you now this say ah because God works, the Christian must work. Work is the plan of God for our lives. Say with me, work is the plan of God for our lives. You know, there are Christians that think that they wish they were in heaven right now. Why? Because in heaven, you don't work. You just be resting. What do you think the angels are doing? You don't know that worship is worked. This is 24 elders are banging down. Can you imagine how their neck will? <laughs> are you here? Yes, now that's just even by the way. When Jesus came to earth, remember in John 9, he says, I must do the works of him that sent me while it is day for the night cometh when no man can walk. Somebody say walk. Wow. When the Holy Ghost comes, he will walk. The Holy Ghost in you every day, every moment, do you know he's doing a walk? There are many things the Holy Ghost is to the believer. The amplified version of the Bible will say that he's the strengthener, the advocate, the standby, the comforter. I mean, it just lists the work of the Holy Spirit. Yet, Romans tells us, Paul writing in Romans, he says, likewise, the Spirit helped our infirmity. We don't know what to, he said, it is still the Spirit that is praying for us, making intercession for us through groanings that cannot be uttered. Somebody say work. Listen. A lazy Christian is a contradiction in his terms. How can you be a Christian? You should be the hardest worker. Yes, smart work, I understand. But I mean you are giving your best to what you are doing. Are you ready? Take another scripture. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 5. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 5. I'm praying for you that you will prosper by this truth you are learning. Amen. Can you shout a louder amen somebody? Genesis chapter 2 verse 5. 1, 2, ready go. Neither word plants nor grains were growing on the earth. For the Lord God had not yet sent rain to water the earth. And there were no people to cultivate the soil. There are three very powerful things I learned from this verse. But let me just say this. Notice, the Bible says, Plant and grains. He says, neither wild plants nor grains were growing on the earth. Right? He now says, because God has not yet caused it to rain. He now says, the reason God has not caused it. Listen, the law of cause and effect is very powerful. Are you here? The reason why God has not caused it to rain on, on the earth, according to your Bible, is because there is no man to till the ground. Is that what the Bible says? For there was no man to till the ground. 
That means, hear me now, that means that it is the presence of a tiller of ground that allows God to send rain so that plants will now grow. Right. I'm saying that a diligent Christian is already qualifying himself for the lifting of God in the workplace. Because how can you be in Eden and you need to till ground? Since everything is ready, no, sir. That the grass is green does not mean it will not need tending and keeping. Listen, even if you get the best job in the world, you will still need to work. Because the best job is not the job that you don't work at all. Do you know that not working can affect you psychologically? Not working can affect you spiritually. Not working can affect your health. Hey, are you here? In fact, the way the human body was designed, if you sit down too long a time, even though you are studying, because you have sat down too long a time, the way the body was programmed, your spinal cord can begin to develop issues. You are not careful. They will even tell you sometimes, stand up and stretch. Why? The body was not designed to always rest. The body was designed to work, to be productive. The brain was designed to add value. Receive knowledge. Process. I mean, every part of your body must work. But for Christians, some Christians, the only part of their body that really works is the leg they used to go to prayer mountain, the hand they used to clap, the truth they used to shout, but their brain is not working. Are you here? Yes, sir. We have come to that season in Christianity where our brain must be working. I was teaching, you know, in a Kitty State University some days ago. And I was teaching them about the areas of furnishing, even though I, I couldn't finish it because, you know, of, of the movement of the spirit. Listen, spiritual furnishing is only one of it. It's not everything. Many Christians only emphasize the spirit, the spirit, the spirit. God is a spirit. But for his will to be done on the earth, there has to be a diligent man ready to host his will. Are you here? Yes, sir. Do you know it's not only God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and the angels that are hardworking. Do you know demons and Satan, they are hardworking? He says, Satan, where have you been? He said, I've been going to and fro the face of the earth. Satan, she says, Sir, Satan, you see me, you are Christian, you won't see me. I don't know if you understand. Sometimes it's not Satan that made you not get promoted. Sometimes it's not Satan that made you not even get a job. Come on, sit down and divine, design a proper CV. You cannot do. And you cannot employ those that can and pay them to help you do it as long as what you have there is the truth. Then you wonder why they reject your CV. It's not Satan that made them reject your CV. Are you here? Yes, sir. Sometimes we blame Satan for what he does not know anything about. Do you know that Satan does not know everything? Yes, sir. Let me even tell you. As you are here now, it's possible for some of you that Satan does not even know that you came to, to service today. Some of you don't even know that Satan is not always seeing you. Satan is not omnipresent. So Satan is not always in Nigeria. Right. Mm -hmm. What Satan does is he moves around. Go and flow. What he has is a network of princes, principalities, and powers, rulers of darkness, thrones, dominions. Is the priest and power of the air. That's his real assignment. Are you here? Yes, sir. So he now has demons and all that. And then your disobedience to the principles of scripture already puts you in an you know in that disadvantaged position where even if Satan does not come, the laws of life will fight you. I don't know if you are with me today. Yes, so sometimes, oh, you, you, you've been coming late to office for six weeks and you have been writing 7.02 a.m. It's always 7.02 a.m. Until they discover this 7.02 a.m. Then your, your MD now calls you and say, M. HR now calls you and serves you a letter. Then I say, M. Then they now ask you, what has happened? Because you were crying. You now say, M. What is it? Then you are now on the street again. Something that took you months to get. That which the Lord gives you will not only be sustained by spiritual laws, it will be sustained by practical instructions. Are you following? Are you getting blessed already? Let's still go. So, God withheld rain from falling upon the earth because there was no man to till the ground. So, growth is impossible in the absence of a diligent man until you are committed to work don't expect to prosper write this down and don't forget it prosperity answers to productivity
Dance from now to tomorrow. Shout from now to tomorrow. Speak in tongues from now to tomorrow. You must be productive. Say with me, I. I, I need you to say it like a productive Christian. Say, I. I from today, I, decide. I will, I will be productive. Then I will make profit. I will make profit. Then I will make more profit. Then I will, more then profit. I will have compound interest. Then I will, compound then I will prosper mightily. If you believe it, shout aloud, Amen. Amen. Look at Genesis chapter 2. Look at verse number 15. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. You want to read it together with me? Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15. One, two, ready, go. The Lord God placed the man in the garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. The provisions of God cannot be sustained by an unserious Christian. Research actually has it that more than 80% of those that win lottery and jackpot, after two years, they go back bankrupt. That you can win 10 million naira and a small picanto car. Maybe because Glow did a promo. And you want 10 million naira and picanto. And you will think, and when they ask that person, what will you do? You say, I will start a business. I will do this. And in, and in two years, the person is on the streets begging again. What happened? He does not sustain the mental framework, the emotional discipline, the spiritual understanding, the practicality to be able to know that 10 million is nothing if you don't know what to do with it. Listen, the Bible says that money is like bread that can have wings and fly away. If you do not know how to trap it and multiply it and make that money work for you, what will happen is that you have not learned how to tend and keep. Most Christians, are you ready for this now? I am blessing you today. I know I'm blessing you. Do you know that some Christians prefer to keep money, but they don't know how to tend their money? The last place that Jesus expects you to put your money, according to the Bible, is a bank. The last place, not the first, the last place. Some of you have 5 million naira, 2 million naira, 1 million naira, 100,000 naira, and it's just lying following your account, but they are removing 50, 50 naira every two day, every day. <laughs> One bolo will not wear They will, Some of them will promise you interest. Interest that the day the interest will come, you, you regret, in fact, you would have preferred to use your money to eat a shoe. I'm saying that there are, there are other channels that will give you a better ROI and it's not a Ponzi scheme. But if you don't have knowledge and you don't ask questions, you will claim you have one million. But once you put one million in your bank account now, by the time you get it, by you, you are likely not to break that one million. When that servant that was unfaithful came to the Lord Jesus, Jesus said, if you could have at least put my money in bank, meaning at least, and not just any bank, bank that they, they, is, they can put something. He said, at least, meaning, <laughs> meaning there are better things. So he says to turn and to keep, meaning that no matter where God brings you to, even at the level you are now, you can start by tending and keeping what is available. Listen, God, are you ready? Can increase what is available but the responsibility of stewardship of what is available is with you god can increase what is available but the responsibility of stewardship dwells with you Now, when we talk about attitude to work, we are saying that your attitude to work affects the output of your work. Christians would like to go late to work. It's a kind of attitude. It's an unchristian... Listen, let me even put it this way. Consistent lateness to work is not a sign that you are ogre or that you are mature. Is a sign of irresponsibility. It does not stop there. 
also when your attitude to work is wrong it may be a sign that your theology and your doctrine is wrong there are christians that have been taught to go to a prayer mountain on a monday morning <laughs> are, are, are you seeing now to you you feel no no it's the supernatural power everything is about power can we not fix it is it god that said it must be monday are there no other days of the week i don't know if you understand yes imagine i now come to my boss they are considering me for promotion on that monday my boss traveled down and came around and my boss now sees i said where are you coming from around to three now say ah hey, our prophet came around the week we went to pray that your boss is a christian does not mean you can treat him anyhow you are not employed here because you're a christian you are employed there because you 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 said you can offer value if the if the if the corporation or the establishment is not making profit because of your presence it means they are making loss because of your presence you cannot be in a place and their finance is neutral it's a lie it's either they are getting better because you are there or they are getting worse because you are there are you here you are either an asset or a liability anywhere you go even though you are a christian have you seen people that if they go anywhere with you you are in trouble it's you that we keep spending for them you know after a while you start getting somehow is that true? no matter how generous you are after a while you feel uh, these ones are users they use people i know what people do to such people they they feel irritated by them so they shift so the next day that person says ah let's go the, you, the person knows that you, you you will not spend the time you are an academic christian are you learning now yes, attitude to work you work in a what is it called restaurant and your table is not neat and you need your boss to look from you know from where maybe the chef from where he's and say ah that table is dirty who will pack the plate and house flies are everywhere and you are saying no god this business must prosper which business will prosper when your management of what is available is wacky why should god give you increase when he knows that what is available now said seems to be too big for you anything you cannot manage well now is too big for you mm. are you here yes, prove that you qualify for the next level by managing what is available excellently now see if i give you one million era today in two weeks, that one million naira will reduce to the level that your mindset can handle. <laughs> the day I learned this thing, it changed my life. For the first time in my life, I was an undergraduate and my father sent me 100,000 naira. Bam! It happened only once, that time. That time. 100, is it 100 or 200? Maybe 100,000, I think. Do you know that? I could not believe my account. Like, I look at my first bank like this, like, Ha! I know first man, man can't ban. I looked at it like this. Eh! Do you know I could not sleep that night? I was restless. It was as if, hey, hundred thousand. Why? My mind, my mind would not handle hundred thousand. Today, by the grace of God, now it's just. I'm not saying that's what I do every day. Please, so let nobody. I'm just saying that today, in two days, I may just spend hundred thousand. I can't spend two hundred. I can't spend three hundred thousand in one week. And I'm not thinking, hey, you know, say, I, I'm not being on that same bread that you will not believe, oh, since I'm expensive in the country. I said 300,000 last week. Who asked you? How much 300,000 that you are rich? I'm like, what's like, what? 300,000, and you want to die? Somebody just transferred 3 million to somebody. You are, you are bossing with your 300,000. And the person is not sitting there. Nah, it's just, it's just one of those things. Thank God. And you, you're already dying for 300,000. That's your mindset. That's, that's your mindset. You bought one Congo of rice. We know that things are expensive. And then you are shouting, you say, ah, all the Mekunos in this country. Are you the Mekunos in the country? Your grumbling now adds to the talent, the challenge you had before that you were managing. You now put at the plus your, your sickness plus your grumbling. Oh, neither. Could it be that the reason why that answer has not come in because you cannot manage what is available now? Remember, God is just. And in the justice of God, if God gives you what you cannot undo, it means God is wicked to you. Are you here? Yes, That's why anytime I'm praying for increase, or God starts telling me about increase, I already know. If I'm most times, God does not tell me about increase. Do you know what God tells me? He starts warning me or giving me discipline and say, don't do like this. This one, this one. Anytime those instructions to manage and adjust comes, I know something is coming. Something is coming. 
Are you learning tonight? Let's make progress. Your work reveals your devotion to God. Hmm. What do I mean by that? How you take your work or your job reveals your commitment to the God that you serve. In the New Testament, Paul was writing, and then he says, servant, obey your masters as unto the Lord. He's saying, masters, don't curse your, don't cheat your members, don't muzzle the ox that treads the corn. You see, all these are basic principles. How can you be a Christian employer? You have not paid your staff for one month. They are families. Even if they don't have families, they are working for you, sweating, trying to make sure that they are giving their best. Two months you have not paid them, and you are moving around with a pot belly, pot, pot belly. And you are going to church with your regalia, even sowing seed to your pastor. You think God will reward such a seed? You are robbing Peter to pay Paul. You are, listen, it's like somebody that steals and go and pay tithe from it. You are only attracting the wrath of God on your life. You, you stole to, you now say, at least if I give God my tithe, the rest is secure. You don't know Bible well enough. Oh, more Bible. For doing that, you are attracting, attracting divine justice on you. It reveals your devotion to God. So I can look and listen. Rather than tell you, let me look at how you pray. Yeah, I say, ah, this, a, this one is a confirmed Christian. Mm -mm. I want to look at how you do at work, how you behave at work. How you fight every other person in the staff. How that you are the only one that is always correct and everybody's wrong. How that you see, you, you are the one that carry the whole load of the company on your head. And every time they ask you, how is work? You are always saying, ah, work, you cannot imagine. Work, you cannot imagine. Should we people say they should sack you? Because which one is the complaining, complaining? We, you, listen, you are not, listen, you are not to be sick. People should not be, you should not put yourself in the position where everybody has to sympathize with you because you got employed. There are people that are unemployed and are willing to work. Can you step aside for them? You say, no, God forbid. Uh -huh. You that is complaining every day of small work they gave you. Is it you that they will now promote to the level of a manager? I don't know if you understand. The Bible says if you contend with men and they weary you, how will you be able to contend with horses? Meaning that if at this level you are already saying I'm dying. When they make you manager, on the second day they will just say, he has died. You must learn to build capacity where you are, listen. The way to get to where you are going is not to be eyeing where you are going. It's to give your best where you are. God is not unrighteous. Let's go. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. We're making good progress. Let's go. First Corinthians. Are you understanding what I'm telling you tonight? Yeah. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. First Corinthians chapter 15. And verse number 58. This is very key. Because I don't know how you will be a student. You will not read. And you will speak in tongues. I say the Holy Ghost will teach me. The Holy Ghost does not remind you what you have not studied before. Reminder, Lord, remind means it was first in your mind. Are you following me here? Yes, sir. First Corinthians chapter 15. Please read with me verse number 58. First Corinthians 15, 58. One, two, Ready, go. So, my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always walk enthusiastically for the Lord. For you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. You know the talent many Christians have? What they would think is that I'm in my workplace, I'm working for my boss. Are you seeing that? And I'm not working for the Lord. So you can write this. Wrong mentality about work. Is the cause of lack of productivity. Wrong mindset. I, I don't want to say, I don't want to ask if it is you. But have you had people say things like, they will just be in their offices and they will say, Don't mind our guy job. His own is too much. Every now go and sign this. Yeah, I'm not doing. I, I thought it affected me. Am I the only one? <laughs> it 
if that is how Joseph did, that means that in the prison, he will not interpret dreams. He will prefer to hide what he could add since it will be more responsibility for him. But you don't know that the way God promotes men is that more responsibility. Listen, let me give you another synonym of promotion. More work. In the parable of the talents, do you remember that everybody that was faithful, they gave them more responsibility? Do you remember? That means that the, the reward of faithfulness is more work, not less work, but greater fulfillment. But it's work. How many of you want us, Tehila? How many of you want us to be 100 here? 100. Please, yeah, let me see. Uh -huh. So you want us to be 100? They now share the flyer for the publicity. You now left it on your chair and went home. Do you want us to be 100 like that? You don't want us to be 100. You want us to be 100. The service starts by 4. You now come 420. So if the service was to depend on you to lead opening prayer, that means there will be no opening prayer. Hmm. Are, you, are you still here now? Ah, we want to grow. We want to grow. Can we grow if we are inconsistent members? No. Listen. Instability is one of the reasons why we don't see growth in our personal lives and corporately. The father of Reuben was giving him a course. He said, unstable as water, you will not excel. Meaning to excel, you must be stable. To be an excellent Christian, you must be a stable church member. Are you here? Hmm. Are, you, are you learning tonight? Are you seeing something? For you know that your labor is work. And it does not, listen, there are some Christians too that have noticed, and that's another problem. They are faithful in church work, but they are not faithful in their jobs. That's an error. The Bible does not teach that. In fact, the Bible does not segregate between the laity and the clergy. All of us are in ministry. In Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11, do you remember the Bible actually tells us that the reason the fivefold ministry was given is so that Christians can do the work of the ministry? Are you here? Meaning that although me, I'm a minister, you too, you are being trained to be ministers. Meaning you are a minister as a child of God. If you know that in your university, as long as you have friends that are unsaved, you would have found a way after six months to bring them to church to hear the word of God. Why? You are conscious that you're a minister. If you have neighbors that don't go to church, you will find a way to invite them and lobby and lure them to come so that they will be saved and established and planted. If after one year, two years in this ministry, you cannot point to anybody that you have brought that has been saved and that has been established, maybe you are not a fruitful member of the church, but you are a visitor. Are you here? Are you learning now? Tell yourself, it's time to be productive. It's time to be productive now. What are we doing? It's time. So work reveals devotion. Now, another thing concerning work is that good work honors God. Good work honors God. That means, let me see, if you make this musical instrument, if you do it well huh, in the production, you use the proper wood, you don't use fake and all that, those stuffs, and you knit it well, you did the right thing. Do you know, as you are producing each of it, before heaven, you are honoring God. Why? It is good work. I don't want to talk about carpenters again, because in the future, I may meet a carpenter that says, ah, sir, we heard your message, you always attack carpenters. Because I don't know how you be a carpenter, they say use my own you went to use another one. It's not my own, it's not Ghani, we don't know what it is. But they painted it like Mahogany. You now see, is, is Mahogany in a way too? Some people say they are selling gold. Let me tell you a story. Are you ready? Yes, sir. I know a mother. During December, the mother went to Eko. Do you know Eko? <laughs> Idumota. To buy clothes for children and the air party. The mother was introduced to gold. Somebody say gold. <laughs> okay, the Lord give you understand. The mother came back to their house with, with gold. 
I did not buy clothes. But unfortunately, when the mother opened the handkerchief to show the husband the special thing she has gotten, it was not gold. It was it was painted bra. It was painted metal. Children, no December clothes for you. Mommy, go and sell your gold. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Work honors God and brings meaning. Do you see that? To life. If you are not working hard and doing the right thing in your workplace, you are dishonoring God and you are not bringing. You are, you, that's why have you noticed that? Okay, let me tell you this. Do you notice that most people, most people today, more than 60% of the world's population, will naturally tell you they are frustrated with their work. Have you noticed? They will tell you, I'm so frustrated. Now, my question is, is it about the amount they are earning? No. They don't see purpose in the work. On Tuesday, I'm going to teach on career issues. Still on this work issue, right? Some people are earning millions, though, I'm telling you. And they are not happy doing their work. And some people are earning just 50,000, but they are very happy. And they are doing it well. They found purpose in it. Listen, if you are a faithful plumber and you need to meet the Nigerian president, you can meet him. Because listen, there are places only a plumber can enter. The White House, you can be sure there's a plumber. It's a plumber that did the plumbing. Yes, sir. If you are an hairdresser, the same way a pastor will lay hands on the wife of the president, your hands too will be laid on the head. Of the wife of the president. Why? Because you make it for her. If you are a diligent addresser. I don't know if you understand. Yes. Uh, listen, your, your job can take you anywhere. It depends on how far you can see. Mm. Proverbs chapter 22. Am I blessing you tonight? Yes, sir. It's a wisdom sermon. So I'm not shouting. This one is wisdom sermon. Just gentle. Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 29. You must learn to build competence in your work. Proverbs 22, 29. Do you see any truly competent workers? They will serve kings rather than working. Do you see that? For ordinary people. Okay. Bible says a human being. Is, there are categories of human beings. <laughs> He says ordinary people. You know the ordinary people. Should I tell you ordinary people? The people that you tell them, I'm selling this lace for 25,000. They, they will price it to 22,000 and bring their own table to measure the length. That's ordinary people. I met one yesterday. You went to buy rice. You want to buy a bag of rice? You want to buy rice? You now want but maybe a quarter or one eighth of a bag of rice. They measured it in a scale before your eyes. I almost gave a, that woman some more, but more away. The way she was looking, she looked at and cared us. Come on, Lulu. You will not believe that this woman measured the Congo stuff and looked for Agolo. My wife supplied the Agolo and gave her. And she could not be joke or confirm story and measure the agolo. And while she was measuring, some were pouring down. Guess what? And change the sack, they put it to a lighter sack to be sure that it's not the sack that's adding weight. She now put it, I said, Oh, we can measure again to see the weight. Pay five zero. I said, I wanted, guess what? And she did not still pay complete money. That one is an ordinary person. Ordinary person. If you have 10 of those ones as customer, oh, oh, le shori. Oh, possibly oh, le oh, le oh, le oh, I hear oh, le lodge job. Eh, le lodge job. I'm telling you something. Mucha woman in my pay, mommy, she, 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 eh. She. But my wife knows me. I was already uncomfortable. I told my wife, let's get out of this place. Let's get out of this place. My wife even wanted them to quickly sell our own first because what we wanted to buy was very much. 
Come on, my beef. Come on, my sheep. Come on, my right. Ordinary people, you enter bike. Bike is one fifty. You price it to thirty naira. Ah. You now get the the bike must still waited for another twenty minutes because you are looking for the change inside the house. You are you are ordinary person. Ordinary person. But see, as that way, man. Now, how do you live the midst of ordinary people that they keep pricing what you offer every day? If you stay diligent, after a while, things will start noticing and say. Let me give you an example of ordinary host of program. Okay. There is ordinary, you see, in every sphere of life, there's ordinary somebody. Somebody say ordinary host. Ordinary it's ordinary host that will invite you, not send the transport fare to and flow. Say ordinary host. Ordinary. Not give you honorarium. Say ordinary host. Ordinary host. You even have acid. <laughs> they host, and the, the host will not still give you food. Say ordinary host. And you will not have somewhere to sleep, say ordinary host. <laughs> and when you is now your time to minister, they will even tell you, ah, just just to summarize, just a short something, just something, just say ordinary host. <laughs> and they will follow you to the POS to withdraw your own money. And they will even be like, ah, because I don't have money to even leave the venue of the program I hosted. Somebody say ordinary host. Now imagine you have invitations, 10 invitations, and the 10 of them are ordinary use. When you get home and your wife asks you, Are you sure your wife will not start doubting your cup? Because listen, the presence of ordinary people can be a test. And it can it can it can be a <laughs> because if ordinary people is the only people you have in your life, you better start getting more diligent. Or else, ordinary people will drown your dreams. Ordinary people. Ordinary people will flash you. They need your help. They will still flash you to call them back. <laughs> Someone will say, oh, oh, wow. Ordinary people. <laughs> ordinary people will want to beg from you. They will first harass you. They will say, you, you now saw somebody for two months. Then they will now say, yeah, Jerry, F -u -u -a. <laughs> Ordinary people. Are you seeing something here? Yes, sir. May you not be ordinary people. Maybe maybe one day I'll preach a sermon on ordinary people. And the way to get out of mediocrity work is to develop competence. Be a master of your craft. Be the best at what you do. Listen, it's impossible to shut the door consistently against a Christian that is given to continuous personal development. The Chinese use the word Kaizen, continuous improvement, K-A-I-Z-E-N. That's their principle in Chinese. So continually improve. On, listen, there is always a better way to do what you are doing. Are you learning? Are you learning? If you are learning, say, ah. Ordinary. Lord, deliver me from ordinary people. Now, God will answer that prayer, but you must develop competence in order to receive the answer to the prayer. Hmm. Okay. Are you still ready now? Yes, sir. Work is an opportunity to make a difference in lives and for the kingdom. Work is an opportunity to make a difference in lives and for the kingdom. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. Is that what it says? No. It's an opportunity to make a difference. Because listen, no matter the spectrum you are, the wrong of the ladder that you are, as long as your work is helping somebody, right? Solving a problem, meeting a need, you are making a difference. It does not matter the job. Actually, if you look at it, any product or service you render that solves a problem, you're already making a difference. Is that true? Yes. Do you know pure water sellers are making a difference? Do you know they sell every day? Pure water business looks uh, like it's, it's nothing until you calculate how much you spent on water in a year and you will find out it can open a factory. <laughs> are you here? Hey. That's pure water. Pure water. Ground too. That they are selling that it may not be more than 500 now. Once it enters inside the bottle, the oh. price change. It says one five. One five. 
Work is an opportunity to make a difference. Now, write this down. This is another important thing you must understand about work. You must work as unto the Lord. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Some Christians don't think that the Holy Spirit follows them to their workplace. They think that the Holy Spirit stays in church premises once they share the grace. But I'm bold, I make bold to tell you that the Holy Spirit is omnipresent and is always and is always inside the Christian. Therefore, there is nothing you do that is hidden to the Holy Spirit. Are you here? Colossians 3.23. Colossians 3.23. Colossians 3.23. One, two, ready, go. Walk willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Listen, child of God, if you understand and apply this principle, your life will change. Your work will change. Because anybody who truly loves the Lord wants to honor him, wants to give the best. You want to give your best. Uh, listen, one of the laws of promotion in corporate offices is that they will tell you, you must arrive earlier than others and go home later than others. Because that's how the CEO is. You, you arrive later than others and close earlier than others. They say, God, you will not pass or you will not believe for five years. They have not promoted me. They are not planning to promote you. Even me, I'm not supporting them to promote. I'm not. I'm supporting them not to promote you. Are you here? Until you do what God wants, then I will support you. Are you following now? Look at Exodus chapter 31. Exodus chapter 31. Oholiab and Bezalil, or Bezalil and Oholiab, by their lives, we learn a very big lesson. Exodus chapter 31, verse 1 to 6. Exodus 31, verse 1 to 6. Then the Lord said to Moses, Look, I have specifically... Now, who is speaking here? The Lord. Is that true? Uh -uh. Is it the Lord? Look. I have specifically, and that's why, listen, in your workplace, all right, you must be specific as to the value you are adding and your target per month. When I was working with First Bank, for example, in the insurance, you had a monthly target. Are you here? Is it 10 million you want to bring? Is it 20? Is it 30 million? Then your unit, there's a corporate target. Are you here? A Christian that does not have any goals that is set cannot achieve anything. Listen, if you don't set goals, you will never be disappointed because we are never aiming for anything. So, all this one, I've, I'm never disappointed. Maybe your goals are not high, you know. Then the Lord said to Moses, I've specifically chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, grandson of Hor, of the tribe of Judah. I have filled him with the Spirit of God. You would think what would follow is and giving him a microphone to preach the gospel to the nations. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says I filled him with the spirit of God, giving him great wisdom, ability, and expertise in all kinds of craft. Notice three things there. And don't forget, you can even write it down. Number one, wisdom. Say wisdom. Uh -uh. Say with me, wisdom. Shout it. Say wisdom. wisdom. Let them know that human beings are here. Shout wisdom. wisdom. Ability. Ability. And expertise. Ability. You need the drill. Wisdom is a product of right knowledge. Ability is both a product of innate talent, inherent talent that you came to the world with and Training to acquire a skill. Are you learning already? Yes, Ability can be what? Inherent talent that you were born with. For example, do you know there are some families, all of them can sing well? Do you know there are some families, none of them can sing well? <laughs> do you know there are some families, they are just very good with instruments? Some of them, there is this design in their brain that the way that in that family, they are just easily, they, they can easily grasp it, although they will still learn. Some of you came to this world with certain natural talent, but if you do not sharpen it, it will, you will not be skillful in it. And for some of us, 
Also, who wants to expand your horizon? What do you do? You now go and take ICANN, right? You take courses. The taking of those courses and the learning of those things, project management and the rest of them, is so that you can enlarge your scope of effectiveness, of value, of knowledge, of impact. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So, talent comes from God, but skill is acquired through training. Do you know pilots used to do training? They cannot, they cannot agree that because you've flown for 1,000 hours, that means that, oh, no, after some month, they'll call you again and say, come and train. In fact, in many private sectors, they will tell you they are doing corporate training, right? Seminars, I mean, conferences, is that true? Workshops, is that correct? Even teachers do workshops because some teachers don't know how to hold chalk. They show them, it's like this. Don't do it like this. Don't do it like that. Then now that they are using whiteboard marker, then when they now start using, you know, this board that you can use a remote, they will show them this is how to press it. Don't press it upside down. Training. It's only that many Christians don't want to improve on anything. They want God to bless them the way they are. They don't know that there are certain blessings of God that it takes a kind of shape and mindset to enter into it. You know, the children of Israel could not enter the promised land except for a kind of mindset that they had. And that's why it was Joshua and Caleb that made it. I'm saying that your mindset may be your hindrance, not Satan. Now, take this one. Are you, are you catching something here? So he said wisdom, ability, and expertise in all kinds of craft. I'm, I'm just imagining that, let's say it's in our day and time. And then the Bible says, then the Lord said to Pastor Lanre, look, I have specifically chosen Mayawa, the daughter of Adabiaka, granddaughter of, all right, of the tribe of, leave that one. I have filled her, look at this now, with the spirit of God. And the next thing you think is she's falling down and manifesting. Oh, thank you for the Holy Spirit. He said, no, wisdom, ability, and, and what? Expertise. Meaning that if you see people solving problems, especially believers, it can be a mark of the anointing of the Spirit of God upon their lives. I'm saying that you can be a graphic designer that is anointed. Yes, sir. Because there are some graphic designers, although in the elementary stage, you can, you can use, you can combine 200 colors. And the thing looks like, we don't know if it is a bouncing cast or cast, cartoon. But as you begin to mature and you learn and you sharpen yourself, they tell you, no, this is color blocking. Which one is blue and indigo and violet with red mixed with white and purple? You, it's not correct. It's not rainbow. Do you know you have rainbow? It's not rainbow. As you begin to mature, what will you do? As you apply yourself to the same thing, you begin to go online. You follow people that are doing better, right? And you are teachable enough to jettison or abandon the useless things that you have learned that is not good for you. And then you say, no, I was wrong. Do you, are you seeing now? Because you cannot be an expert if you are not teachable. An expert is somebody that has been taught, that has learned, and has unlearned certain things that he used to believe. Is that true? Before some of you thought that there were three wise men that went to give Jesus gifts. Or the personality taught you that according to the Bible, they are not three wise men. They are wise men. Simple. Now you will now be a foolish Bible student to not agree when the Bible is clear about it and say, no, there are still three wise men. May I feel their theory? There's nothing like you, you feel. When an apprentice is learning from a mechanic, his boss, when he starts, they don't tell him, go and bring down an engine. No. They will tell him, or oh, you yeah, bring plug spanner. Bring Ama. Eh? <laughs> eh, carpenter is Ama. They say bring spanner. Bring uh, this one. Bring battery. Gradually. After a while, they begin to learn how to, you know, remove the bolt. It's step by step. Many Christians are too hasty. You don't want to follow process, but you want to experience progress. Progress answers to process. Are you learning tonight? Yes, sir. Let's still make some more progress. I continue on Tuesday. But let's still catch a little more. Amen? Amen. Write this down. Don't forget this. Commitment to our work 
commitment to our work gives credible witness about our faith commitment to our work gives credible witness about our faith among unbelievers commit if you're a business person commitment to your business gives what credible witness to your faith right among unbelievers do you notice that anytime you promise people as a christian and you don't fulfill it do you know the first thing they will say Object be right, me Christian, or if you're a pastor, they will say, and you call, immediately, and you call yourself a pastor. Now, even if the person does not call himself, they have been calling you in your in their mind. I hope that you will not prove them wrong by living the wrong life, because you are the city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. Why will you promise people as a tailor? Ah, madam, your gun will be delivered tomorrow. 6 a.m. 31, 31, 35. Oh Lord, dear God, mommy. Don't worry, we're traveling. Don't worry. Oh, come on, Ah, you're fine. Ah, you're fine. Ah, no, fan. Ah, no, smart. Once you pay, it's a pay, it's a pay. You'll just be surprised. Ah, ah, how far, how far? Then the number will, they can block you for that season. Then when you visit them and say, please, this thing, I need it now. You will be surprised that you know our tell to man by a group they will sew one person clothes and between other people in other places different material but the, the one that is the same material hey, you call them when you are passing and say hey, I'm running out. Hey, oh. Only, Ellen. your friend will pass it oh yeah say, until you now decide to come back i said let me even take it now they now say ah actually what in are you following me here? That's why that have you noticed that many Christians that are in tailoring, some of them are not doing well. Do you know people are willing to pay any price if you confirm tailor? Tamaya, welcome. Let me let me see. Come first, come. Let's clap for her. She comes. Let me be sure if you're confirm. Let her come. Clap, keep clapping now. I didn't say admire. Let her come first before you admire. Amen. Uh -uh. Oh yeah, clap again, clap again. A smile, a smile. What, what do you think about her dress? Eh? What do you think about her dress? Now, I don't know if it's tailor or red meat. Is it red meat? Red meat. Now, do you see why? Do you know how many kilometers China is from here? China. Do you, you know no China is far. Can you trek to China? You like I'm not trek to far uh, to or <laughs> Jambe roadblock. <laughs> The reason why she bought it from China, China, they imported it from China. You're rich man, let's see after service. <laughs> imported it from China. You know why? We trust Chinese more than Nigerians. There are Nigerians too that we sold these kinds of things. If they put it near China, so people check the label. Once they see China, they say they want China. But guess what? There are other Nigerians that can sew this gown. And if they tell you 25,000, do you know some of you will happily pay? You know why? They are good. Appreciate her again. Thank you very much. They are what? Yeah. Oh, good. Which one is still a get What the and the left hand of your suit is longer than your right. It's not parachute we sell you should sew now. Listen, that your Christian sister does not mean you should wear boo every day. You are not boo Are you following me? Which one is you? You they say you are a shoemaker. One one leg is tight. People are regretting giving you work to do. As I happened to you before, you gave somebody a job, and because he's the Christian, do you know there are people that would prefer not to give Christian work because it's like Christian is to fold their hand. We want to do church all. We say, Christian, come and fix light. <laughs> Christian will come and go and bring light in his parlor and pump. When you now assess, you say, ah, 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 a shoe, ni? a shoe. God will punish some people because they even lie on Satan. Are you following me? Check another one. Are you learning here? I'll give you three more and then we pray. I continue on, on Tuesday. I, I want these things to sink in. That's why I'm not rushing it. Fruitfulness and multiplication answers to work. Listen, 
Concerning the last point, the reason why some people will not be born again is because the Christian has misrepresented Christ in the workplace today. Fruitfulness and multiplication has us to what, sir? To work. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 to 28. After this service, you, you guys ought to go to go to chicken rep and, and, and buy me food chicken. Because I'm pastoring you well. Is that true? Yes, sir. Don't share that, that for you now. The pastor. From my proceeds from work, I want to just honor you. And next Sunday, you just come with, with, with a, uh, what do you call that thing? Barbecue. Pastor, this is for you. Don't always come to service and say, Pastor, I'll find anything there. Stop it. <laughs> Genesis 1, 27 to 28. Are we ready now? Are we ready now? No, and please, so don't be offended. Though. I'm not forcing you. But Paul said, if we minister spiritual, it is bad to read your carnal things. Genesis 1, 27 to 28. Let's go. One, two, ready, go. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Read verse 28 like a mass choir. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry around the ground. Listen, this thing I'm teaching you. My book thrive no matter what. I share the principle there. Look up now. Let me bless you. See, these things I'm teaching you, I know it like the back of my hand. I know this is not a business school. You see, but the assignment of a faithful pastor is that if it is time to teach you something on business from the Bible, I, I, I've been to Bible school anyway, uh, to, to both Bible school and business school. I'm a good pastor. I've been to both Bible school and uh, I have the clothes of business school, but I don't have the certificate. But I understand what they taught me because I did well. Now hear me. I can literally teach you about product, about price, about promotions. Are you here? Yes. Be fruitful. Tells us that there is a seed on your inside that can reproduce itself. Hear me. Your business can reproduce itself. In fact, your business can have branches without you being here. Yes, sir. Multiply is the same thing, but in different places. I'm just giving an example. Here he's saying I have children. And I hope you understand. A text of the scripture always has one meaning, but application can be different. I'm applying it to your business. Do you understand? We are Bible students. So I'm not twisting, but I'm showing you. So, for example, what do you do? Rebecca, what do you do? Talk fast. You don't do anything. Tehila, what do you do? You work in a place, Abi. Now, I, I need somebody who sells a product. Mr. Mayawa, what do you do? What do you do? What do you sell? You are a baker, so you sell cakes. I be a crow, I know you're a baker, but do you sell cake? You sell cakes and pastries, Abi. It's really why you brought something. Amen. And God sent me to you to do. To collect. I'm praying. I'm playing. Now, do you know that there's a way you can do your cake that is almost falling down on a wedding day? <laughs> Some people have a testimony on their wedding day, their cake agreement. What do you say? They quickly call the chairman of the occasion to call the cake quickly because they don't cut it, the cake will fall, and it will be a bad omen, it will be a bad sign. The cake was not only almost falling, it was, guess what? And it was very strong. Hmm. If they throw that cake on you, okay, bounce cake. Now, only the people, rather than use proper cane, listen, and in business, most times, it's the little things that you ignore that spoil your product. You are selling book. All of it is already dog-eared. Somebody will, because of just that breaking in the ear of the book, it, it, you think everybody just are concerned about the content. People look at the container too. Your packaging. So it's not it's not enough to even have a product. I just told you now that once granite enter bottle, because today now I'll give you I'll give you granite. Don't worry. Today I have enough. I've been to enough places where may you not go to ordinary. Are you here? Amen. I have enough granite to offer you bottles. Today you will eat granite. People say <laughs> once granite move from nylon into bottle. Do you know granite in bottle and granite in nylon? They are the same. But they are not age meat. Yes, 
cashew nut. Hmm. Once you enter bottle. Even Zobo, Zobo. Once Zobo moved from nylon, you know, back in when we were young. Ah, Zobo inside nylon. I don't feel like he's drinking Zobo today. Do you know once Zobo enter bottle now? And you enter shop right, for example, and you see that Kuli Kuli Alata, 10 Naira 20. Now they will just say this one is 1850. Kuli Kuli. Yeah. And guess what? People are buying it. They will even put it in plastic. They will even design their name and put it. Kuli Kuli. The person is telling you that he believes so much in his own Kuli Kuli. But you, you are doing business. You don't even market what you sell on your WhatsApp. You are only putting Bible verse there because you are evangelist. God bless you, evangelist, but you'll be a broke evangelist. Once people think about you, they should be able to identify you with what you sell immediately. Now, if they say, I need dogs, <laughs> you already know. Mas, mas, shere, oh, yeah. I'll be in Lagos tomorrow now. And I'm working with people that are coming from America. Guess what? Because I want to help them to edit. Say edit. Yes. So when I used to send you broadcast on WhatsApp and I would write, I, some of you will see it, you will not even like. God has caught you now. Because now I, I, I'm wise. Every gift God has given you can be monetized. However, you must make sure that it's within the right context. Because I'm a pastor now, I cannot monetize pastoring. A pastor is called to lay down his life. Are you here? For the ministry, are you learning from what I'm telling you? Me, I, I work actually as, in fact, more food, many full-time pastors don't do half of the work I do. There are full-time pastors that don't go to office for three days in a week, and they are full-time pastors. So the question, and they don't read, they don't study, they don't do, they don't do anything apart from Sunday service. <laughs> and they are full-time. They, they are not full-time, because they are not fully in it. A full-time pastor is the person that is fully inside water, the work. But guess what? If the ministry cannot sustain me now because it is young and people don't have money or plenty money, that's why you should give millions so that I can, I can do more. Are you, are you saying that now? Yes. Will, will it not be stupid of me to get the opportunity in Lagos and, I'm, and, I, and I can go? I will now say, no, 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 no. no I, cannot, I, cannot do, I cannot do it. Is it right? No. Is it tongues my family will eat? Say glory to God, para teles kevenes. Your wife will tell you, now your para, what my para, my para. Well, no, I definitely show you what para. No. The gifts you have and the skills you have learned, which food is he bringing on your team? Guess what? Even as a teacher, as teachers in Lagos are earning more than bankers in Lagos. Yes, sir. In some schools, though. May you not go for <laughs> amen. Oh. However, some teachers are wise, they will discipline themselves and still take two or three home lessons. Or some will do weekend lessons, just gather those children and collect the same amount from all of them, six cents, and transport them and teach them. So rather than spend one, 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 you see that they will make sure that the children are safe. You see, I, and I can have 20 children. Do you know all these tutorial masters that used to do jam? Do you know they used to have money? A friend quadratic equations one more. Why they go away? And you will pay because it's valid. I want to ask you a question before we pray tonight. What do you have that is the, the prophet asked the woman that was about to die with her child? What do you have in your house? And some of you have things you have that you have to sell and use and collect the money. Eh, eh, I'm almost like pastor, I'm hungry. But you have a washing machine that is working. But you how many clothes do you have? All your clothes are ready, you say. Washing machine will tear it for you. Are you here? Are you here? Sell the washing machine. So no, how can a pastor tell you to say, how can a wicked pastor? It's not wicked pastor. Because if you go around begging and you have something that can produce more, it doesn't make sense now, does it? Some of you ladies have clothes you are not wearing again. Look for those boss color people. Wash it where dry clean and give them. Pray on it, don't worry. They will not put them on your clothes. Are you following me here? Or give it to people. But you are holding everything. That man that was unfaithful with his talent, he was hiding it. Only God knows whether the key to your lifting with your own hands, you have buried it. You are hiding it. You are Rather than allowing it to be planted, fruitful, multiply, spreading, you are not doing it. Some of you even have good products, but you don't have marketing. It's only you and angels that know what you are doing. 
Listen, let me let me give you this final one so that we can pray. We'll, we'll continue on Tuesday. Are you blessed? Never be ashamed of what you are selling or what service you are rendering. Don't be ashamed. Listen, I have pastors that I have had to help them with their books. Why? Because they have seen my works and they appreciate it. And guess what? I don't tell them, ah, daddy, I just celebrate grace. I collect my money. Are you here? Yes. Regional overseer, senior pastor. So I'm not talking of a uh, 25-year-old pastor. But I want senior men. And guess what he does for me? Number one, I'm stretching myself, learning more by helping them conduct the research. Are you seeing that? Number two, after they have told me the stories and the things they want to write in the book, it's still indirectly still me that is writing the book. And that means that even if there was an erroneous doctrine in the document, it cannot pass me. I will remove it and make it and put the writing. Meaning, Error will not spread because I am one of the editors of Jesus in the editorial field. Are you seeing yeah. sense? That's why you must give it purpose. Let's stand up and pray. Are you blessed? Let's stand up and pray. We'll continue on Tuesday. Tuesday, I'll bless you. Make sure you follow online to catch it on Tuesday. See, we are going to pray one prayer. One prayer for tonight. Lift your hands. Please pray it from the depth of your heart and then I'll bless you for the week. Are you ready? Say with me, my father, my father, my father, my father. By your mercy tonight, I receive wisdom, wisdom, and the discipline to prosper with what you have given me. Go ahead and receive wisdom and discipline to prosper with what God has given. What you have been given is enough to get to where you are going. Because God will use it as a seed for your future. Don't be satisfied. Don't be satisfied. You better pray now. Press into it now. God has great things in store for you. You cannot remain small. You may start small, but God has a great thing in mind for you. Ragadaba brasa katala patele kaventele mahas shabara teketelias metabora katas. In Jesus' name we are praying. Now let your amen be very strong. I want to bless you. Lift your hands toward heaven. Father, in the name of Jesus. Ah, uh, you can do better. Father, in the name of Jesus. Make sure your amen does not go down. As you go this week, may your business experience greater visibility. Let favorable partners and customers come to you. Yeah. Mm. As you engage in diligence, let Jehovah promote you. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Father. Lord. The remaining three months of this year, the Lord says it will be a month of great profit for you. Yeah. Great profit for you. Yeah. Great profit for you. Yeah. I prophesied to you about three weeks ago that some of you are going to change level four times this year. Do you remember? Yes, I declare it shall be so for you in the name yes, of Jesus. Sir. Father, we receive grace to engage our work and approach it with a sense of devotion to you. Yes, Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Yes, Somebody shout amen two times. Yes,